Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Actress Shelley Duvall has revealed her struggles with mental illness in an interview with US television personality and psychologist Dr. Phil. Shelley is best known for her turns in the horror movie classic The Shining and for playing Olive Oil opposite Robin Williams's Popeye in the 1980 film version of the comic strip. In a preview of her interview with Phil McGraw, the 67-year-old claims Robin, who died in 2014, is alive and shape-shifting. She also told that she is very sick and needs help. The star suffers from an undiagnosed mental illness. How was Shelley Duvall traumatised for the rest of her life? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Shelley Duvall was a household name in the 70s after quickly rising to fame as one of the biggest movie stars of her generation. She was one of the biggest celebrities of the 70s and 80s and worked in Hollywood as an actress and producer. She became famous for her ability to portray eccentric characters and appeared in popular films such as Annie Hall and Nashville. Duvall's best-known film is likely the iconic Stephen King film The Shining. However, in spite of the film's popularity, it ended up causing Duvall a world of headache and most likely contributed to the sad state of her life. All through the 70s, Duvall was one of the most present stars in Hollywood, working frequently with top directors such as Robert Altman and Woody Allen. Her unique looks, including prominent front teeth and large quizzical eyes, made her face impossible to forget, and her ability to portray everyone from ditzy best friends to troubled performers made her an important part of the independent film scene for well over a decade. In 1980, Duval appeared in the adaptation of the well-known Stephen King novel The Shining, opposite Jack Nicholson. It grossed $46 million on a budget of $19 million. It featured some of the most iconic shots and lines in horror movie history. Fans eagerly flocked to theatres to see the terrifying tale, and Nicholson and Duval both earned rave reviews for their work. However, Duval notoriously had a difficult time while filming The Shining, reportedly being tormented by director Stanley Kubrick for days on end. Duval later admitted that her time filming the movie had been hellish and that she would cry all day long. Reportedly, Kubrick would even tell other members of the cast and crew to stay away from Duval, forcing her to feel an even greater sense of isolation. Shelley Alexis Duval was born in Fort Worth, Texas, the first child to Bobby Ruth, a real estate broker, and Robert Richardson Duval, a lawyer. At the time of her birth, her mother was visiting her grandmother in Fort Worth, though Duval was raised in Houston. During her childhood, Shelley's mother humorously gave Shelley the nickname Manic Mouse, because she would often run around her house and tip over furniture. Shelley, however, was more than a mouse, but rather quite the little artist. Her favourite thing to do when she was very young was to draw. She also has three brothers, Scott, Shane and Stuart. Shelley graduated from Waltrip High School in Texas and at first became a cosmetic salesperson. She never wanted to be an actress and for all of her on-screen triumphs, the harrowing tribulations that went along with them and the toll they have taken perhaps prove she found herself in the wrong shoes all along. Not many people fall into the profession of acting, and that alone makes her career almost inexplicable, but not nearly as mystifying as what followed when she plunged into the rabbit hole of stardom. It was 1970 when Shelley was discovered by talent scouts at a local party. Director Robert Altman wanted to cast Shelley in a film that he was making during the time. The story goes that in 1970 Robert Altman was shooting Brewster McLeod in Duval's home state of Texas. At a party, he became captivated by the almost otherworldly presence of Shelley Duval, who was inwardly a very reserved yet upbeat young lady, but her striking appearance and enigmatic ways gave the outward impression that she was some sort of benevolent alien entity bringing life and vivivity to the drab gathering. In short, Altman wondered whether the party provided the perfect pastiche of what she might add to a movie scene. Shelley had experience in acting in high school plays at the time and took Altman's offer 
and she appeared in her first film, Brewster McLeod. Altman was so fascinated by her performance that she appeared in his next films, including McCabe and Mrs. Miller in 1971, Thieves Like Us in 1974, and Nashville in 75. Aside from these three successful films, Duval's acting blossomed in her leading role as Mil Lamoro in Three Women in 1977. Duval's acting was so superb that she won Best Actress at the 1977 Cannes Film Festival. Shelley also starred as Bernice in Joan Mickling Silver's Bernice Bobs Her Hair in 1976 and had a cameo in Woody Allen's Annie Hall in 1977. In the same year, Shelley also hosted an episode of Saturday Night Live. When the 1980s hit, Duval's career was just beginning. She is famously known for playing the role of Wendy Torrance with Jack Nicholson. During the making of this film, Kubrick psychologically tormented Duval, causing her immense stress and affecting her mental state. He would often ignore her entirely during filming or would put her in situations which caused her immense fear and distress. The most obvious example is when Kubrick shot the famous baseball bat scene with Duval and Nicholson 127 times, which is the world record for the most number of takes in any film set. In the years since the release of The Shining, much has been revealed about the horrendous working conditions for all of the cast and crew of the film, but none as extensive or exhausting as Shelley Duvall's. At the time, Duvall was a star on the rise, but Kubrick's treatment of her on set almost made her walk away from acting for good. Kubrick completely mistreated Duvall on set. The result of the constant takes were Duvall's hands were shredded raw from gripping the bat for such a prolonged period of time, her voice was hoarse from crying, her eyes became swollen, and she left the set completely dehydrated. The moments we see on screen of Duval crying in pain, fear and exhaustion were not acting, but an actor delivering lines while enduring a trauma response. Kubrick's psychological brutalisation of Duval was so severe her hair began falling out. To wake up on a Monday morning so early and realise that you had to cry all day because it was scheduled, I would just start crying, Duval said in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. In the equally iconic door scene, Jack Nicholson destroyed nearly 60 doors to get the shot to Kubrick's liking, filming this one moment over the course of three days. The scene was mostly improvised, and Kubrick reportedly kept information regarding Nicholson's choices to tear down the door with an axe from Duval, meaning her reactions are authentic. This isn't acting, this is responding to trauma. There's a quote from actress Dee Wallace in an interview she did for Eli Roth's History of Horror, where she recounts the exhaustion from shooting Cujo. In it, she states, What most people don't understand is that your body does not differentiate between a perceived threat and an actual threat. So I blew all my adrenals out because for eight weeks, literally, I was in fight or flight. This helps explain what was going on with Duval. No matter how much she tells herself I'm acting and no matter how much she knows the actions she's performing are scripted, the body is going to respond to the circumstances as if they're truly happening. Vivian Kubrick's documentary, Stanley Kubrick, A Life in Pictures, doesn't shy away from her father's ridiculous methods, with co-star Jack Nicholson admitting that Kubrick acted like a different director when dealing with her. Many of Duval's lines were unexpectedly cut, she was frequently kept isolated and she was forced to wait for extensive periods of time before performing her scenes to throw her off. Vivian's documentary even shows moments of Kubrick not acting alone, but instead requiring the rest of the crew to follow his lead. Don't sympathise with Shelley, he said to the crew. He almost made the decision to never compliment her work and instead criticised every choice or impulse she had for the character. At one point, he encourages the rest of the crew to ignore her and tells them to disregard any needs she expresses. Kubrick is notorious for being a perfectionist, but at what cost? Thereafter, Duval was badgered to be part of the film, and she acquiesced to the demands of potential fame and fortune, in the same sort of baffling way that someone might give in to working overtime. I got tired of arguing, she said in 1977 regarding her debut appearance. And I thought, maybe I'm an actress. They told me to come. I simply got on a plane and did it. I was swept away. 
Now having garnered awards and accolades throughout her career, she is plagued by mental and physical stresses, making appearances on Dr. Phil to claim that Robin Williams was a shapeshifter and that she is being hunted by the Sheriff of Nottingham. This is the story of that unspooling tragedy. In January of 1979, Robert Altman would offer Duval yet another role in one of his films. Only the role was a certain role that Altman believed she was born to play. That certain role was Olive Oil, in the real-life version of Popeye. Shelley was sceptical at first on accepting the role due to bad memories as a child of negatively being called Olive Oil in grade school. She fortunately decided to take the role and performed admirably. Shelley also sings several songs in this film. The most famous ones would be He's Large and He Needs Me, which also appeared in the film Punch Drunk Love. As the 1980s rolled on, Shelley's career never slowed down. She appeared as a supporting actress in Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits in 1981. She played Susan Frankenstein in Tim Burton's Frank and Weenie and co-starred in the hit comedy film Roxanne in 1987 starring Steve Martin. From 1982 to 86, Shelley continued her filming career, but from a different aspect. Since Shelley was 17, she had a collection of a variety of illustrated classic fairy tale books. During the making of Popeye, she showed her collection to Robin Williams. One particular fairy tale she showed Robin was The Frog Prince. Picturing Robin as the real-life Frog Prince, Shelley created Platypus Productions, her own production company. She went to Showtime with the idea for airing a television program that was based on fairy tales. She produced Fairy Tale Theatre, which Showtime aired, that was a hit television series that was based on several classic fairy tales. It was on television from 1982 to 1987. Each episode was a one-hour series, and there were a total of 26 episodes, all hosted by Shelley Duvall. She also starred in four out of the 26 episodes. In 1985, Duvall created Tall Tales and Legends that was aired for three years until it ended in 1988. Similar to Fairy Tale Theatre, Tall Tales and Legends was also a one-hour series hosted, produced and guest starred by Duvall. Although it only consisted of nine episodes, Shelley was nominated for an Emmy for the series. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Shelley discovered Think Entertainment, another production company which helped Shelley create more programs and movies that were made for television that aired on common cable channels. She produced three more programs from these production companies that aired on Showtime, Nightmare Classics, Shelley Duvall's Bedtime Stories, and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Her Bedtime Stories program earned her a second Emmy nomination. Shelley sold Think Entertainment in 1993 and retired as a producer. Even throughout the 90s, Duval remained a working actress, appearing in movies such as The Portrait of a Lady and The Underneath. However, by the 2000s, Duval had all but retired, and fans were left wondering what happened to the quirky star. While Duval's career progressed quickly, her eventual departure from Hollywood and the public eye was just as sudden, and her last acting gig was in the 2002 film Manor from Heaven. Duval moved back to her home state of Texas, where she remained out of the spotlight for years. Then in 2016, she agreed to an interview by the controversial Phil McGraw, better known by his TV persona on his talk show Dr. Phil. In the interview, Duval appeared to be struggling with her mental health, and made several troubling claims that led viewers to condemn McGraw for exploiting her and express their concern for Duval. When he asked about The Shining, her response was the most honest she'd been in years. I guess this is what most people know me for, right? And look, I won't get into too much detail now, but that film was hell to be a part of, she said. She followed by saying, I mean, there was a great cast, Jack, Scatman, Crothers, Danny Lloyd... They were all wonderfully hilarious people. But then there was Stanley Kubrick, the director of this iconic masterpiece. All I really say for now is that if he hadn't directed the way he did, if he hadn't done everything with force and cruelty, then I guess it wouldn't have turned out to be as it was. After that interview, Duval once again returned to her quiet life away from public scrutiny. However, journalist Seth Abramovich of The Hollywood Reporter earned the privilege of interviewing Duval again for a more sincere update on her personal life 
and what she's been up to over the years after retiring from acting. In the exclusive interview for THR, Shelley Duval recalled her life following the controversial interview. She became visibly upset before explaining that she found out the kind of person he is the hard way. My mother didn't like him either. A lot of people like Dan Gilroy said, you shouldn't have done that, Shelley. The interview sparked dozens of rumours about Duval's mental health, but most of the criticism was directed to McGraw for distressing her to such limits, as well as even deciding to release the footage. Following the disapproval and general outrage the interview prompted, McGraw began to reach out to Duval yet again for a follow-up discussion. He started calling my mother, Duval revealed. She told him, don't call my daughter any more, but he started calling my mother all the time, trying to get her to let me talk to him again. A representative for Dr. Phil did reach out to THR and explain that they didn't intend to sensationalise Duval's mental illness, mentioning that she rejected their offers for professional treatment as well. Part of their response states, After many months of follow-up in collaboration with her mother, she ultimately refused assistance. We were, of course, very disappointed, but those offers for help remain open today. No apology was included in the statement. There's a tragic acceptance to Duval's perspective, as if she bought into the lie that she wouldn't have been as good in the role without having endured harm, or as if she has convinced herself that the torture she underwent was necessary for the film to be as beloved as it became. Duval didn't have the opportunity to act because she was too busy trying to maintain sanity while being psychologically exploited. That's not the sign of a bad actor, that's the sign of a bad director. To put a person in the position of feeling threatened and fearing for their life for 127 takes on a staircase is not legendary or the work of a perfectionist. It's abuse, and we need to start calling it what it is. No matter where she decides to live, we hope Duval has all the love and peace she deserves. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Shelley Duval was not the only actress with huge traumas. Tippi Hedren opened about Hitchcock's behaviour behind the scenes. Why was her life a real-life horror movie? Watch this video and find out.